Uh, welcome, Ash, to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Nice to meet you. Yeah, thank, thank you for thank you for having me. Yeah. So, what makes for an investable business? Any three things that investors definitely look for before investing in a business? So, I think um, primarily um, people always think that the first thing you're looking for is the idea, right? But what I've observed is that it's more about the team and execution. So. When an investor is looking at something, they're giving you money because they want you to put that money to work, right? And a good investor will also know that the idea might change. And what they're going to be looking for is that do they have the right execution plan and do they have the right team of people that are going to go through that journey and make it work? Do they have the right configuration, right? And I think the third piece is do they have the right people around them that are going to help support them to make sure that they succeed um, at getting their startup going? Sure, sure. So, uh, tell us uh, uh, a little bit about what they should definitely keep in their pitch deck, you know, in the elevator pitch. They should definitely pitch it to the investors because they don't have too much time. Sometimes it's just one minute that they get. Yes. And it can be an opportunity missed or lost. Yes. So, definitely they should keep these three things in, in the pitch deck. Yes. Um, so, pitching, pitching investors is a bit of art and a bit of science. And I think it's important to recognize that when you're pitching an investor, their decision is not a monetary decision, right? They are making a gut decision on whether they want to go on a journey with you uh, over the next three to five years, if it's, that's how long it's going to build a startup. I think the key thing that, um, in, um, I think the key thing that entrepreneurs often forget is the why, right? Why are you doing it? Why are you the person that is the best person in the world to make this happen, right? So there's a million people out there, you know, when, when uh, Ola raises money or Flipkart raises money, they're like, I want to be the next Ola and I want to make this happen. But why are you authentically the right person to make this happen now, right? So the why now, right? Why you and why now? And I think a lot of people are not authentic about this, but when you, once you decide your idea and you're able to make it happen, it's much easier to raise investment. Sure. How should they tackle failure? Because they'll have to pitch it to a dozens of investors before getting a small yes, even even a hinted yes. yes. So how should they tackle yes. dejection and rejection? Yeah, so I, I always like to say, uh, you know, on the topic of pitching investors, you have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince. And in life, um, dealing with rejection, especially if you're culturally, there's some cultures that embrace failure. And there's other cultures, um, including Asian cultures, some Asian cultures that look at, frown upon failure. So the idea of recognizing that if you're going to go through your startup journey, you're going to have to meet at least 50 investors. Um, and we've, I've looked at the statistics around that you have to meet at least, at least 50 investors before you get close to a yes or a yes. Um, and if you're not able to do that, and if you don't have the stomach for rejection, then it's going to be very difficult. Sure, sure. So tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing uh, in Singapore and other ecosystems, uh, building this startup ecosystem from the ground, grounds up and including in India. Over the last 10 plus years, um, I've made it my life's mission to help other people discover their life's mission through entrepreneurship. And I feel that, you know, there's a lot of things that a human can do in their life, but if you can find something that is authentically something that you're authentically gifted at doing and create a product or service and make that a reality, that's probably the best way to live. If you can make money doing that, that's the best way to live. And so after my first exit, I decided to embark on a journey where I started teaching at some of the top uh, business schools and engineering schools uh, all over the world, including the INSEAD Business School. And we created a program um, and we named it the Startup Course uh, because at the time we were the first guys doing it. Um, and we launched the StartupCourse.com platform to allow people to go through this journey. And we took the time to research failures. And a, an important thing for people to know is that if you're going through the startup journey, it's better for you to learn from failures than to learn from the Flipkart founder or the Ola founder because, you know, those are exceptions to the rule. And, and you need to figure out what are the key elements that cause startups to fail and learn from them. And a lot of people, when they build a startup, they're doing it for the first time. So my goal was to figure out ways to teach people so that they understand why first-time founders fail and also give them, the credi give them the credibility to go get investment. And over the last 10 years, my, my students have raised over 1 billion US dollars in capital. 
Um, and that's my metric because that's what makes it real. Um, and that's my goal. And one of the reasons I'm here at IIT um, and one of the reasons that I spend a lot of time within the community, including uh, with the Global Indian International School here, is because I want to find the next and help build the next superstars um, in, 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 in entrepreneurship, right? And help them uh, discover their life's mission and create jobs. Because I think creating jobs is something that we need to do. The world is changing so much. Uh, we as a society need to be accountable for creating jobs. Thanks so much, Ash, for joining us today. No Thank, Thank you very much for having me.